Um, and it is with, yeah, great happiness and excitement that I pass over to Phil Kingston today. Well, I'm very uh, glad indeed to be with you. And I pray that the Holy Spirit will um, bring good out of this meeting for all of us and everybody recognized. Now, to put this meeting in context, I've written an article called How Imminent and Dangerous is Runaway Climate Breakdown? It's primarily for a Catholic audience. I'm delighted that we here are interdenominational and perhaps, perhaps also interfaith. I sent the article to the um, Tablet Catholic Weekly where it wasn't accepted. Um, Joe Seedlecker, the editor of the Catholic Independent News, has helped me in the past. So I will send her um, transcript of this and um, ask if she'd publish it any um, um, comments I might add about what goes on in the uh, second two sessions. Three years ago, an article by Professor Dem Bendel called Deep Adaptation, a map for navigating climate tragedy, challenged my belief that global warming could be contained. I now have no doubt that major Earth ecosystems already on path to temperatures which will, in due course, how long we don't know, not sustain life, not sustain human life, that is. This disturbing realization gives huge concern for my four grandchildren and their generation across the world. Now, I'm first of all going to refer to four areas of evidence which demonstrate runaway climate warming is already happening and is irreversible. The first is about the record rainfall and flooding in Pakistan. UNICEF has reported that the waters will take two to six months to recede, and during that time there will be rapidly increasing numbers dying of malaria, dengue fever and acute diarrhea. Tragically, children are more prone to these waterborne diseases than adults. The second is that 19 of the 19 of the 20 hottest years, 19 of the 20 hottest years in the Arctic have occurred since 2000. It is three million years since the Arctic was as warm as it is now. It is the fastest warming part of the planet mainly because this sea ice is no longer there to reflect back the sun's rays. Los Alamos National Laboratory reported in July 2022 that Arctic temperatures are increasing four times faster than global warming. The third piece of evidence is that scientists at Reading University in April 2021 concluded that over a third of the Antarctic ice shelf is disintegrated to a point where it will collapse into the sea, raising global sea levels by about three meters. And the fourth is that carbon dioxide parts per million in the atmosphere are now at levels which were last reached three million years ago. At that time, the temperature was two to three degrees higher than in the pre-industrial era and sea level 15 to 25 meters higher than today. I'll let that sink in a bit. Atmospheric carbon dioxide, far from reducing, is continuing to rise each year, with 2020 and 2021 being record years. Despite the... Um, it on the economy, the pandemic, two record years in 20 and 21. Each of these concerns demonstrate that the greenhouse gases, which have been emitted in the last 300 years, have set in motion forces which have their own momentum. Climate ecosystems, which have kept global temperatures within parameters conducive to human development, 
are now out of our control. Runaway climate breakdown is beyond any loss which we humans have previously faced. So it is no surprise that the vast majority of us recall from facing this, especially if we have children and grandchildren. From time to time, I am in grief for my own fault. At the ending of COP27, many comments were made, and there's one that most spoke to me. It was by the leader of the European Parliament's delegation, Baz Eichard. It was simply this, I can only conclude that 2022 has been a lost climate year. Something shocking occurred in the week before the Glasgow COP, remarkably little publicity. Some 30,000 IPCC documents which have been leaked to Greenpeace on Earth were published by them to reveal that some of the biggest fossil fuel and meat producing countries were involved in, lo in lobbying against climate action in 2021. In Argentina, Australia, Japan, Saudi Arabia and the countries which make up OPEC. Greenpeace and Earth decided that it was in the public interest to release them in the week before the Glasgow COP. I hadn't uh, seen or heard um, any comment on uh, this leak, this um, public documents being made public. It's very important for us to understand the traps of IPCC reports are seen by all country representatives. Each has the right to seek amendments to them, not in relation to the science, but in relation to the interests of countries. From their beginning, the annual COP meetings have been mandated to reduce CO2 emissions. They've done so only once in 2008 when the cause was the global economic recession. It's essential to acknowledge that the current global economy is a direct cause of the ongoing increase in greenhouse gas emissions. Except for 2008, every year has seen an increase, and 2020 and 2021 saw record increases. The priority during this period has been profit rather than care of the earth. And I imagine that the fetish of economic growth ensured that degrowth was not raised at COP27. I regard Pope Francis as the most outspoken world states person when it comes to critiquing the global economy. For example, he says this, just as the commandment, thou shalt not kill, sets a clear limit in order to safeguard the value of human life, today we also have to say, thou shalt not, to an economy of exclusion and inequality. Such an economy kills. I haven't heard a British bishop or a priest repeat this. Such an economy kills. The sooner we adults face the truth about runaway climate breakdown, the sooner we can be alongside our descendants, supporting them in developing resilience and systems of cooperation. A worldwide study in 2021 of 10,000 young people's concerns about their future showed that 84% were worried about the climate. They reported feeling anxious, afraid and powerless. <clears throat> and not trusting politicians to speak the truth. They express their longing for adults to be with them in their fears. This study challenges adults to examine whether it is our fears rather than theirs which hinder our engagement with them.
with world temperatures now on track to at least 2.7 degrees centigrade, the predicted reality is the probable cessation of human life on Earth. Current commitments to cut greenhouse gas emissions put the planet on track for an average 2.7 degrees Celsius. A United Nations statement said in the week before COP26, there is no evidence from both China and India that plans for economic growth will require, sorry, I haven't written this clearly. The evidence from China and India is that they have um, plans for serious economic growth. That these populations amount to about half of the world's population. And that growth will require increases in fossil fuels in both those countries, especially coal. The UN Secretary General said that the outcomes in Glasgow are encourage, encouraging. They are far from enough. The emissions gap remains a devastating threat. The finance and adaptation gap, gap present a glaring injustice to developing nations. Faced with the overwhelming nature of the content of this talk, I would be lost without my faith. I readily turn to God for courage and support. When I acknowledge my helplessness, Jesus, oft repeating, do not be afraid, comes to mind, and often ease and calm replace my turmoil. When I share my distress and helplessness with others who listen, I feel relief. I realize that I am neither mad nor alone. Something miraculous occurs. Hope returns. What had seemed an inescapable pit, an opportunity for growth, integration, and positive action, often with others. Sharing my belief in runaway climate breakdown with my children and grandchildren continues to develop. And it is now as likely for them to bring new information to me as it is for me to them. At the same time, I am very mindful of just how frightening for them what I'm speaking about here is that they are the people who will be trying to respond to these increasing temperatures. I believe that it is only with God's help that we will find the strength to face the enormity of what runaway means for our descendants and ourselves. For them, it means acknowledging the reality of developing climate catastrophe. For us, it means facing our regrets, guilt, and grief. I'm currently studying Dan Daniel Berrigan's where on to stand, the acts of the apostles and ourselves. Daniel Berrigan, uh, a famous activist at the time of the Vietnam War, and uh, during his years of, act of action, he was in prison for seven years. His book, Where on to Stand, has much to offer with regard to what I raise here. When the first Christians experienced the Holy Spirit, they were transformed into a community of deep faith. Facing runaway climate breakdown with its devastating social, political, and economic consequences needs a similar trust in that spirit. Such trust calls for the nonviolent protest of Jesus, as was shown by Martin Luther King and his assistants. British NGO, Christian Climate Action, many of whose members are Catholic, expresses the same principle as is shown by the numbers who are willing to go to prison to protect climate and environmental ecosystems. The 
Meanwhile, to a large extent, the Catholic Church, particularly in the materially rich countries, continues its centuries old association with Christendom. It has a long way to go if it, if it is to become a church of meaningful service to our descendants under the leadership of the Holy Spirit. When last year Pope Francis was asked which book he would recommend to Catholics, his response was the Acts of the Apostles. There is scarcely a page in Acts which doesn't, which doesn't include the, the I'll say that again, very <laughs> important. There is scarcely a page in Acts which doesn't include the guidance of the Holy Spirit. My impression is that Francis call to read Acts has largely fallen on death. Years, at least in sections of the Catholic Church, which I am um, in touch with. Thank you for listening, and I wish you well in your breakout groups and look forward to being with you again 15 or so minutes later. Thank you very much for that, Phil.